right there. Another one? All right, good. So this is this uh, solubility table here allows you to predict if something is water soluble or not. There is a version in your book as well that gives you the same results. However, mine, of course, is better because I wrote it. But either way, we'll give you the correct answers. And you don't need to memorize this. For all future quizzes and exams, I will give you a copy of this just like I give you a copy of the periodic table. But even though you don't need to memorize this, you do need to know how to use it. Let's go through this list here. So first off, any compound containing a group 1 cation or ammonium is definitely water-soluble. Now we mentioned before, and uh, back in nomenclature times here, remember we treat ammonium just like a group 1 cation for many, many reasons, and here's one of them. So ammonium compounds are water-soluble just like group 1 compounds are. On to number 2, all compounds containing NO3- is nitrate, ClO4- is perchlorate, ClO3- is chlorate, and C2H3O2- is acetate. In terms of nomenclature, I only held you responsible for nitrate there, but in terms of solubility, you can still recognize those anions. So if you have a compound containing any one of those four anions, it's definitely water-soluble, which means... Yeah. Yes, it is. Now that means that our cobalt-2 nitrate is an electrolyte. Because if it's water-soluble and it's composed of cations and anions, we can now safely assume that an aqueous solution of it would conduct electricity. Therefore, it must be an electrolyte. Continuing on with our list here, it gets a little bit more complicated. Number three here, all chlorides, bromides, and iodides are soluble, but there's some exceptions this time. So if your cation is silver 1 plus, lead 2 plus, or mercury 2, 2 plus, then those particular chlorides, bromides, and iodides are insoluble. All others are soluble. Mercury 2, 2 plus is kind of a weird cation there. That's actually a polyatomic cation, just like ammonium. If Hg2 has a collective 2 plus charge, what's the charge in each metal? Or in each mercury atom? 1 plus. So if you ever see a mercury 1 salt, that's the structure you're going to see. So for example, mercury 1 chloride is Hg2Cl2. Each mercury there has a 1 plus charge. Kind of weird. Under rule 4 here, kind of like rule 3, all sulfates are soluble except when those sulfates are paired with one of the, po one of the following cations here. Again, we have that mercury 1 cation, Hg2, 2 plus. And again, we have lead 2 plus again. We also have strontium, calcium, and barium cations. So all sulfates are soluble with those exceptions. Rule 5 and 6 flips things around now. Rule 5, all hydroxides are insoluble, with some exceptions. So first of all, uh, rule 1 is an exception, so anything with a group 1 cation is going to be water soluble. Also, calcium, strontium, and barium hydroxides are also soluble, but all other hydroxides are insoluble. And then finally, rule 6, all compounds containing phosphate, sulfide, carbonate, what's SO3 2 minus? That's sulfite. SO4 2 minus is covered under rule 4, that's sulfate. SO3 2 minus is sulfite. You don't have to worry about nomenclature there, but if you see that anion, just know that's an insoluble compound. Any phosphate, sulfide, carbonate, or sulfite is going to be insoluble unless rule number 1 applies. So looking at this list here, you should be able to look at any chemical compound now and determine whether it's water soluble or not, and therefore determine if it's an electrolyte. What about, for example, uh, this material right here? What would that be called? Silver. Careful. What is silver? So the name would be? Silver 1 chloride. Silver 1 chloride. There we go. Is it composed of cations and anions? Yes, like essentially everything we've talked about in general chemistry, what it is. So we have Ag plus cations here, Cl minus anions. So, yes. But is it water soluble? There we go. Because rule three applies here. All chlorides are soluble. Great. Except if it contains a silver plus cation. So, unlike most chlorides, this particular one is not soluble, which means an aqueous solution of silver-1 chloride would not conduct electricity. We 
have a non-electrolyte. Okay, I'm going to put a couple more up here and let you guys try to work these out on your own. So label each one of these chemicals as being either an electrolyte or a non-electrolyte. 